evening, everyone. How are you doing? We are going to be going through listings today. Um, just a second. I've got a weird echo. Uh, we're going to be talking about listings, marketing and managing your listings today. So I am hoping you all can hear me. It is being recorded. Uh, good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Kim. If you all can drop a line in that chat box, it does two things for me. A, it lets me know that you know where the chat box is so that if you have any questions during this session, you can ask them. And two, it also lets me know that my sound is working. You should see an email from IQ Office on your screen. I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you here in a little bit. We're going to be going through everything that you can do with your listings to really um, help promote yourself and your business. So, uh, at, as I said, this is being recorded. You will be getting a copy of this so that you can go in and uh, rewatch parts of it. It will also be posted on our YouTube and our Facebook channel. And I, without further ado, I'll jump in. We're going to spend about 40 minutes today. Please ask questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. We're here to help you grow your business. So, uh, the email that you see in front of you, if you have a new listing, is the email that you're going to be getting from um, us uh, to say, hey, congratulations, you have a new listing. Uh, are there some things that you can do with it? Uh, you, have, you can view your listing details. You can see the uh, website pages, which are the details pages. You can see the single listing website. Um, which are the SLWs. They're branded with the address of the listing. And you can also see the showcase page. You can easily share those to social media from these links. Below that, you have the opportunity to go in and either download or customize a property flyer. And below that, you can actually go in and uh, see the property postcards. You can order postcards. We're going to be talking about that today as well. Uh, Jane, yes, we do. You should have audio. Can everybody else hear me? Beth, Stacy, Megan, I, Judy, I'm assuming, yeah, okay. So Jane, um, check the sound on your computer. Not that saying that helps you. So uh, that is the email that's going to go out. It does two things for you. So this email is going to alert you that, hey, your listing is live in MLS. We've pulled it from the MLS. You've got all these opportunities to market it. It also is a really good way to know, like, hey, I can reach out to my seller. I know some of you broker load your own listings, so that's not a big deal. But some of you do not broker load your own listings. And so being able to know when it has been actually loaded into the MLS. You can go in and you can enter it in. Is really pretty cool. So that is what this email looks like. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen with you all here. And um, I know that in the past couple of weeks, there's been a couple of you that have said, hey, your screen's a little bit blurry. I'm going to work really hard to go a little bit slower today. I also have um, increase the size. I have a call into the pro software that I use um, and I'm, I'm working on getting that resolved, but this is as clear as I can make it for you. Um, if you have any questions about what I'm clicking or where I'm clicking, please let me know. So when you're on your main dashboard, you can see your active listings here underneath this active listings gauge. So you can quickly access your active listings by clicking the listings gauge here. And that will open up your listings dashboard. Now, um, the way my company has it set up, and this company has it set up, you can see all the listings in the office. Or if you go over to the My Listings tab, you will see only your listings here. Underneath the All Listings, the choices that you have. So how many of you are brand new agents on the call today? Uh, just so I have a better idea of who I'm speaking with. How many of you have been in the business uh, two years or less. If you're nodding your head or raising your hand, keep in mind. Awesome. Thanks, Stacey. Thanks, Mary Megan. So we've got a couple new agents. How many of you have been in the business two to five years? Awesome. 
Awesome, Judy, five, perfect. So we've got actually a really good mix. And then how many of you have been in the business five to 10 years? Thanks, Lori. Awesome, so Lily's been doing it for 12 years. How many of you are over 10 years? So Lily's over 12 years. Um, just to give me a good idea of who's over 12, awesome. So we have a really good mix on the call today, awesome. That's exciting, of uh, people who have been in the business for less than six months, and people who have been in the business for 20 years. So, if you've been in the business and you carry a large listing base, you don't need to promote other people's listings. However, in the market we're in right now in most cities where it is really, uh, listings are really scarce. And for those of you who are brand new to the business, depending on your company settings, you can actually go in and I can say, okay, I want to share a listing. These are listed by or ordered by list price here. You can change that list price. You could search only for a certain agent and see their listings. So if I have permission from someone to use just their listings, and then I could go in and I could go actions and I can share this. So I can share it on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, or I can just look at the website. This is what the web page looks like. So I can see here. I clicked on the details page on the website. It takes them you to my website. So this is really small, so you can't see it. It says Kelsey.cbidaho. It shows my information because this is listed with my brokerage, and it has information about the listing. The other thing that you can do is you can share it on Facebook. So I can say, hey, I want to share this showcase page on Facebook. It's going to automatically log into your Facebook. It links it here. You can choose whether you share it on in a group or on a friend's timeline or on a page you ma manage or a message. You choose that portion. And it's as simple as going to that actions and clicking on that, that, that be social. Now, this single listing website, what this does is I'm going to share this web address in the chat box so that you can see actually what that looks like. And this creates a branded website based on the address. So it's got the 2415 North 8th Street in the title of the website. This is really built for your sellers. Uh, it, it's beautiful. People can easily share it from here. You can see the descriptions. Um, if you have done a video tour, there's a gallery of photos. You get a a snapshot of area information, and then people can go and search for homes, search for houses, or search for houses in the zip code. So this will always showcase the listing agent, but it really is built for your sellers to have a website that is branded for their home. And again, that's the SLW, that's what that means. Are there any questions so far about how you can go in and just quickly share other people's listings. Awesome. Because no one said anything, I'm gonna assume the answer is no. If you can go ahead and type an N or a no in that chat box though, it does really help me out. Then I know you're not frantically typing on the other side of the screen um, and I'm just moving and flying past you. So to go in and edit your own listings underneath my listings. Oh. You can see here, here is the listing. I can see a snapshot of this. Uh, and you can go in and you can go to the actions and you have an additional button called edit. So when you click on the edit button, it is going to pull up a page that looks like this. Anything that has a slide out tab, that is how you know you're in an edit screen. 
So again, I just went, I went to actions, edit, I have a slide out screen and I know I'm in edit. Now, a couple things that you need to know. One, your IQ office is automatically updating from your MLS. You do not have to go in and manually add anything to your IQ office that is not an MLS. So if you put it in MLS, as far as listing details, it's all pulling over. Uh, some things that you should notice. Uh, you can say right here where it says display on website, you can turn that off if you would like. Uh, you can choose to turn the remarks off. If it is a private listing, that means it's a listing for only your office, you can say yes. So you have a few options here. These are gonna be the rarities of things, uh, but you do have a few options. As you scroll down, and I'm just gonna scroll out a little bit so it doesn't look as um, squished, I can, you can see more information. So underneath the seller, there is a name attached. When you attach the seller to the listing, so you can actually go in, you can put a first name, last name, you're creating a login, username, and password for that person. You are giving them access to a portal to log in to your website. What does that mean? That means that on your website, if they're on the home screen, they can actually go in, let's see where I've got that. I just did a web editing one here not that long ago. Oh, there it is, and I edited my website. So uh, I can go in and I can click my portal. When they click on my portal, it is going to bring up a portal that looks like this. Welcome to your portal. It will show your agent information on the left-hand side. It is going to be branded to you. That you can see any uh, saves that people have had. You can see any searches that they've had. So there's a lot of information in this. If they are a seller, then it is also going to show the listing report statistics. And we're going to get there. Don't worry. Just know that underneath the seller is where you attach the seller. You've got your images here on the right-hand side. Again, these are uploading from MLS. You can change these images. So if your MLS is uh, not exporting a high resolution, know that you can go in. You can upload photos here. You will get a, a notice that if you change the photos, they no longer will upload from MLS. I've never had an issue with the resolution, but if for some reason you do, just know that that is something that you can change. Uh, and then at the very bottom of the screen, you can see the MLS remarks as well as the description. Uh, we all agree to play nice in the sandbox when we join our MLS, and all MLSs have different rules about what you can and cannot say. The Coeur d'Alene MLS here says you can't put a builder name in a description. It's one of those rules. We don't all represent the builder. They don't want to deceive any clients as they are going through and another website and see, oh, this was built by XYZ Homes. They call that agent. The agent says, well, I don't know. I don't represent XYZ Homes. So if you want to on your website change that so the builder is included, again, you're going to go in, you're going to type what you would like to have said here, but then notice this field is overwritten by the MLS remarks every day. So if you're going to do that at the very top of the page, you need to change um, update from MLS to no, right here. And you need to talk to your office about doing that. Jane, did you hear what I said at the beginning that I have a call into the software? I'm going to make this as clear as I can, but there's nothing that I can do about that at this time, unfortunately. So at the very bottom of this page as well, 
there's a section that says story. Yeah. I have a call into the software. I can't. Um, I, I'm working on getting it fixed, but at this time I don't have a resolution from the software company. So at the bottom of this page, there is a section called story. This part here says property story status is inactive. When your seller logs into their portal, they are given the option to add a story. So for example, um, for this property, uh, the seller may have a story about raising their three boys here and how they like how the house backs up to an alfalfa field so um, they can shoot their bows at night and see the deer that come through and they're really looking forward to the next family that comes in. The seller can type that story in. The property story status will remain inactive until you, the agent, go in and mark it as active. The reason for that is this. We all want to believe that our sellers would not intentionally do harm to our business. However, sellers don't know the fair housing, equal housing rules. And so if they put something in there that doesn't follow those rules, you, the agent, need to be able to edit this to protect yourself first. So seller puts a story in, agent, you approve the story, and then you can mark this as active and it will show on the website. Uh, there is a question, Victoria says, update from MLS has a T, that T means true, Victoria. And if you don't want it to update from MLS, you need to talk to your office. Say, hey, I need to make sure this listing isn't updating from MLS. I've actually gone in, I've changed the remarks. And I want to make sure that it's not up updating. And your office manager or your listing manager can do that. Okay, so that is everything on the details page. Just a real overview of maintaining your listing, what you can do. Again, you can easily share this here from the details page or the um, see the websites on LinkedIn. You have those same options in the upper right-hand corner to share. The next thing I want to talk about are the action buttons. So underneath this actions button, there are a lot of things that you can do. So you can actually apply an action plan. So you can go in and you can say, hey, I need to add an action plan to this listing. Uh, there are some pre-existing action plans in here, new listing action plan. Uh, we have done some webinars on action plans. That is a webinar for another day. But to get to those, there's a tool preferences on the left-hand side, and there's a section called My Action Plans. And you can go in. I can say, hey, add an action plan. I want to add this new listings action plan and click Save. When I do that, it's going to add all the steps in the action plan, and it's going to complete all the actions that have already been done. You can also always go in and delete an action plan. It will still show the action plans or the actions that have been completed. If you wanted to go in, you could actually go in and you could delete these completed actions as well. You also could add an individual action. So you can go in and you can say, hey, plus new action. And when you do that, you could add a follow-up request, add someone to a campaign, send a survey, order marketing items, share on social. There's a lot that you can do. Um, you would choose the action type. You would name the action. Um, you can give it a description, uh, ad campaign XYZ if you're checking on your Facebook page, and then you choose the date that it's due. So you would say, okay, I want to check on this on Wednesday. I want to assign it to either the main listing agent or the co-listing agent, either or, 
And is this something that's visible to the seller in their portal? Yes or no? You choose that. So if you have things like uh, check on your Facebook marketing, order your postcards, anything action items that are in your marketing plan that you have promised the seller you're going to do, you can actually make that list available to the seller. So they can log in, they can see your plan, they can see what's completed, they know what's going on. It's a digital way to keep in touch with your seller. Again, that's on your website underneath their portal. Now I can see here, here is the check on Facebook advertising, who it's assigned to and when it's due. So you can go in and add a whole bunch of actions to this. How many of you on the call who have been in the business longer than a year have a listing checklist of everything that you're going to do for a listing? I'm going to have my professional photos taken. I'm going to have my sign installed. I'm going to host two open houses. I'm going to share it on social media. You know exactly what your plan of attack is for your listing. So for you new people on the call, as you're building your business, building that checklist is a really good thing to do. Also, for Lisa and Kim, you now can digitalize that. So you can automatically applied to all new listings that you take. To do that, you would go to your tools and preferences, my action plans, and create your action plans. And then after you do that, you would go up into your profile. And when you go into your profile, you can go into your preferences tab. And about halfway down that page, there's a default action plan. And underneath that default action plan, you can see here it says new listing action plan in this line. And I can actually search for one. I could select the action plan I wanted to apply and click save. And now any new listing that comes in will automatically have that listing plan attached to it. Does that make sense? So you're not having to remember when you go in to go in and add individual actions. You can actually just have an action plan automatically assigned. It automatically lets you know when you need to do things. And when you're creating that action plan, you decide whether or not those things are available to the seller in their portal to see. <clears throat> For experienced agents on the phone, uh, I'm sure that this makes wonderful sense to you and I hope you're really excited about it. For new agents on the phone, know that this is how I would use this. I would go to my selling my listing appointment and I would say, hey Kim, I am super excited to be here. I would love a tour of your home and as we tour, I just want to talk about a few things that make me different than other agents if you're okay with that. Uh, the first thing I want to just tell you is Generally speaking, we all really do the same thing. We help you market your property. We're all going to come up with a value that's really similar. And so the pricing of your home is really up to what the market will allow and, and what point you're comfortable with. But the things that I do differently are I have a plan of attack with marketing and actions that I need to do as your agent to help promote the sale of your home. And I don't only have that checklist, but I make that checklist available to you online so that you can log in to a portal on my website and you can see everything that I'm doing and everything that I've done to help promote your listing at any time that's convenient to you. That way you're not trying to track me down. If you have questions, of course, I'm always available, but you know what's going on in your comprehensive marketing plan of your home. And the reality of how that works for me as the agent is I've gone in, I've created my action plan, I've chosen what items are available to the seller, I've set it up to automatically attach to the listing, and I'm just working my plan. As part of that plan, there are reports. 
does that part make sense to everybody before I go into the reports? Because this is another big part for, for y'all to see. Cool. So there are also reports available to your seller. So you can go in and remember on that details page, I attached the seller. So they've pulled through to this screen. I can choose who to copy. So if I want to be copied on the email that goes out, I can do that. But I can go through and I can set the competition. So I can say, okay, I need to um, put in the competition for this listing. I need to put the beds, the bath, the price range, the garage, um, acreage, all the details of this listing so that we know who, what are the competing listings. I can choose the location of those competing listings, either by community, by zip code, by building name or map. To select these, you would just click on the dot next to what you would like to choose. And then if you needed to choose more than one zip code, you'd click on one selected, and then you would just check the boxes next to the zip codes that you would use and click OK. There are a ton of zip codes. These pull from your MLS as well. So if you know what zip code you need to add, you can actually type it in and then just check that box and click OK. On the right-hand side of the screen, underneath Report Features, you choose from Listing Details, showing activity and activity graphs. Some of you have companies that are using the showing, this is their showing software. Some of you do not. If you are not using this to set up your showings, make sure you uncheck these boxes. Uh, web activity report, competition report, and referral report. You can then set this up to send every week, every two weeks, every four weeks so I can say hey I want to send this every week I'm gonna click save and now it is going to go to the seller every week I can see the next send date is on August 19th if I want to send it today so that they get it today as well I can click the send button at the top but I also can just view this so when I click view, it's going to preview everything that the seller is going to get. This is something else I talk about in my listing appointments. I say, hey, Kim, so you're going to have access to that marketing plan. But the other thing you're going to have access to is a seller report that talks about the statistics of your listing. So you can see the details of what's going on with it. You can also see all the showing activity that's happened. And then you're going to be able to see all the web activity. So how often are people looking at your listing on, on online? Because I know that you're interviewing Judy and Jane as well. But I'm a little bit different. And they might say that your listing is going to be on 800 different websites. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how many websites your listing is on if nobody's looking at it. So you're going to get a detailed overview of what that looks like. I can scroll through. I can see that on August 6th, it was appeared in 28 different search results. Uh, I can see all of it here. I can also see all the competition. So I can say, hey, Kim, you're going to get a detailed act listing list of everything that competes with your listing and you're going to know what else you're looking at uh, so if you have a whole bunch of other things you know competition you know how well it needs to show if you don't have any competition this listing is kind of an anomaly right now uh, then you know that you're you, you are really good penny that's a great question so penny said what websites does it track this is tracking, so these this web activity is tracking everything that's happening on your company website, on your personal website through IQ Office, as well as um, other agents in your office. The referrals, so this referrals section is tracking if they found it through something else. So if they were on Facebook and clicked through, if they were on Zillow and clicked through, if they were on Google and clicked through, that's a referral. Web activity is tracking what's happening on your company website.
Does that answer your question, Penny? Cool. No problem. I love questions. Questions make things a lot easier. So again, that report can be av is available underneath the seller portal, as are your actions if you've set that up in your action plan. So now you're not only able to promote yourself during your listing appointment about how you're different, but you're also able to follow through after you take the listing in a way that is a lot easier because actions are being completed. Your seller can log in at any time and see what's being updated. You can set up a report to automatically generate and go out. And you're able to spend your time building your business and finding your next listings. All right. Next thing I want to just quickly go through are open houses. So there is an open house tab on this section. And you can schedule your open houses within IQ Office. Some of you are part of MLSs that do feed your open houses out. Some of you are not. That's an MLS thing. Uh, if your MLS does feed them out, we are able to pick them up and have them show. If they do not feed them out, then you have to go in and manually schedule them. You can do that here on the open house screen. So you can click the green schedule an open house. It will say who it's being held by. You choose the date and the time. If it's not being held by you, you can scroll down and you can add a different agent in your office and then you click finish now you can see the open house on this page open house is scheduled and who it's being held by you also then see on the details page that there is an open house and when it's scheduled lisa i'm coming back to your question and on the website it will show that there is an open house being held you always can go into listings and then open house on the left hand side to open up all the open houses that are happening so it's monday morning i can see here that there are only three homes that have open houses you can tell right here by the three i just want to quickly touch on that one of the most frequently searched terms for buyers is open houses. So if you have a listing and you know there are going to be open houses there, whether you're hosting them or someone else's, it is a very good idea for bumping your uh, for bumping your visibility on the web to schedule all your open houses as far out in advance as you can. You can always go in and edit them so i can say okay saturday august 17th 8 a.m to 11 30 a.m that is actually not going to work i need to change this i'm actually going to be there from 11 15 a.m to 4 30 p.m you can always go in and you can delete them from here so schedule as far out in advance as you can knowing you can always go in and edit them Give your listing the best possible exposure by getting it in front of all potential buyers. They go to your website, Jane. We're going to get there. Lisa asked an important question um, that I want to come back to quickly. Can there be more than one seller to the portal? So if you have two contacts in your IQ office, can you assign more than one of them to the listing so they have the same portal? And at this time, Lisa, no, you cannot. However, I do think that that's a really good idea. Um, so let me submit that to see what we can do to make that happen. Because I, I do think that that's a really good idea. So Jane asks, where do your buyers go to view open houses? So they would go to your website. And so they can be on your website here searching. And there is a filter that says open houses so if i go in i say hey i want to do an advanced search and i need more options i can choose that i want them to have an open house 
And now I see there are only three homes available. And here are the three homes with open houses. So they are going to your page here. Does that answer your question, Jane? And Lisa, does that answer your question as well? Perfect. There are some really cool things you can do with your open house here. So you can go in, you can print your open house flyers directly from here. So I can go in, I can print my flyers, I choose the flyer I want to print, it automatically puts all the listing information in. I can email that out, I can print that all from this open house screen. So here's the flyer, it put everything in. Save an email, save and print, it's all there for me. I also can go in and I can email the agent. So I can email the agent from here. But the coolest thing about open houses is the sign in page. So as you're hosting your open house, you have a sign in page. And as clients come in, they can sign into your open house. The leads for this go to the agent who is hosting the open house and as they're filling this out if someone comes into the house so let's say that penny comes into my open house i say hey penny great to see you uh just let you know about the house uh main floor bedrooms upstairs great backyard make yourself at home uh if you could be sure to sign in before you leave. It would be really helpful. My seller wants me to track how many people came through. She says, oh yeah, no problem. Or she says, well, I'm really not sure about that. I say, okay, uh, well, are you working with an agent? She says yes or no. She says yes. I say, awesome. I don't want to bother you. I don't want to be a pest. Just put your agent name in that comment section and then I'll follow up with your agent and not with you. Penny says, no, she's not working with an agent, but she's really hesitant to have her information in there. I say, hey, Penny, it's just really tracking for my seller. And if you just put in that com comment box, no contact, I'm going to leave you alone. It's your chance. Then I know what you're saying and you can get information about the, the home and I'm not going to bother you. She says, great. Click sign in. And then she chooses whether to have this property texted and or emailed to her. That's a great question, Lisa. I'm going to come back to that in just one second. Uh, they can click finish. You can click finish. It also times out after about 30 seconds. And um, then you can see this. So if the person is already on someone else's IQ list, so let's say, Lisa, that uh, Jane came into our op my open house and she's already on your IQ list. It goes to both of us. So Jane in her... IQ office is going to see that there was a login like that that you were at an open house underneath recent contact activity it's also going to let me know here's Jane's information because Jane gets to choose that she can sign into that open house I do want to pull up what that text message looks like so you can see what it looks like to your client so just bear with me while I oop, while I pull up my text messaging. Here it is. Messages for web. I can see here uh, there's an existing contact source. Um, and they sent the flyer. It also says, Kelsey, thank you for stopping by the open house today. Click here to view the details of the property. I can click. I've got all the details of the property and they're taken to my website. They also get an email if they choose to get that email that goes right to them. Within my IQ office, on my homepage, I can actually go into my contacts and leads now and I can say, okay, I need to know about Kelsey. I'm going to just type in her name. 
okay, here she is. And I can see everything that's happened with her. My social profile, here it all is, my activities. So that's where everything is. Any questions on open houses before we jump into postcards? Cool. So I need to delete that open house really quickly so I don't forget. So postcards. Underneath marketing, you can order postcards to target an address. To do that, you go to marketing and go up to my orders. When you do that, you can click on the plus order button in the upper right hand corner and it is going to pop open a postcard wizard. You can go in, you choose the category. So I may see, say I want to do uh, a just listed postcard or an agent promotion or a buyer's neighborhood. So I'm gonna go buyer's neighborhood postcard. And I'm going to choose uh, this black postcard. The front screen is a screen that I can actually go in and anything I hover over as you see a highlight is something that I can edit. So I also can select a property so I can go in and I can say I need to choose 6083. Sixty eighty three Quail Ridge Street. It's going to go in, it's going to reach out, it's going to grab the photos from the MLS, it's going to automatically insert them in to the postcard. It's thinking, once it gets all those photos in, I can say, okay, here's the front of the house, I like that picture, um, but I don't need two foot fronts of the house. Um, so I'm going to just change this to the backyard. I can actually go in and click property and I can select from property images. So I can say, okay, I want to show the fire pit. It will crop it to the right size. I click save. Then I can go in, I can edit all this text on the back. I can change my agent photo and then I click save and continue. The next screen that I get is going to give me the opportunity to either add contacts that I have, so I can add contacts from my contact list. I can upload a contact file. I can have a quantity delivered directly to my office, or I can target an address. So I can actually go in and target the address that that home is listed at and click save and continue. I review my order. I go ahead, I can put in my payment. If you've ordered postcards before, it will remember your credit card information. You can also choose to pay later. And then you will see your order on this status page. I can see that it's pending and my payment is pending. It takes seven to 10 business days for these to reach the mailboxes. As soon as you submit your payment, the order starts to be processed. You get a proof, you have to approve the order, and once you approve the order, it starts to process. This is a great way to follow up after open houses, after you, are, you get an active contract, or if you're just farming a, a neighborhood. 65 cents covers the entire cost. So the printing and the mail uh, delivery of those postcards. I know that some of you are with other companies um, that have some custom postcards in there. So know that there are a lot of options for you with ordering your postcards. Again, to do that, we went to marketing, my orders, and then we created a new order. That is also something you can add to your action plan so that you know 
and you don't forget to order your postcards as soon as that listing is live. So we've been talking for about 45 minutes this morning. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, I want to make sure that I am getting you good information, that you are understanding. Is there anything you'd like to see again today? Do you have any questions about any of the material, material we went through as far as uh, marketing, working your action plan, or maintaining your listing? So Judy, yeah, that's a great question. It says, Judy asked, for those of you that aren't looking in the chat box, what is the radius when you uh, just target the listing address? And Judy, it's targeted by the number of homes. So let me go back to that screen. And then, uh, Megan, I'm going to come back to your question. So I've got my postcard here. So it's targeted by the number of homes, not by the the diameter of the circle. So I targeted 100 homes, but you could do 600 homes and it will choose the 600 closest homes to this location or 150. Does that answer your question? So it's based on the quantity of homes, not on the radius. So you know exactly what you're getting. Because if you set a mile radius, in some places a mile radius might hit you know, 500 homes, and in some places, a mile radius might hit 50. Uh, let's see, next question is, uh, how do I get back to that open house sign-in page? There are two ways. You can go to listings, open houses, and then underneath the actions tab next to the open house, you can go to the sign-in page. If it is your listing, you can go to listings and open up the listing. And if there's an open house scheduled, it will display at the top of the listing here. Uh, Lisa, you can't. So Lisa asked a really good question. Can you check the list to scrub it before it's sent? No. Not at this time. Uh, we're just we're purchasing those addresses and sending it out. What I have done is my neighbor two houses down is a real estate agent as well. And in that notes box, so you can go in. And if you know that, you can in the notes type that. So you can say, hey, I know that. Uh, Antigone lives at this address and Connie lives at this address and Jan lives at this address. So I need to please exclude these three addresses from my list. You also can send it to your sphere. So if you're sending it to your contacts, you can actually send it to your contacts here. Or Lisa, if you wanted to pull, have title pull that list, you could upload that list here by using an upload contact file. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? All righty. If there are no other questions, I know you are all very busy. It was a busy weekend, and so I hope that you can jam out, get some of this done. I highly encourage you going in, working on those action plans, getting them applied to your listings. For new agents, start writing out your marketing plan. What are the things you're going to promise your seller as, as you get listings? Um, super excited to see you promote your business. For those of you that are new, we're doing IQ Office 101 Part 2 this afternoon at 1 o'clock Pacific. You can always find us on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook group. Uh, you're very welcome. So we have a Facebook group called Realistic Users. All of our information is posted here, so you can go in. We try to answer people's questions via video as well. You can find us on YouTube. Um, our YouTube channel is called Realistic Support. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put both of these lists or these links in the comments so you can see us on YouTube. And all of our webinars can be found 
um, underneath showtime.zoho.com. All of the upcoming webinars are listed here. If there's something that you would like to see, you're going to get a quick survey uh, after this webinar ends. I value all your feedback and would love to know what you want to know more about. Yes, absolutely, Lisa. These are all recorded. They're all posted on YouTube and on Facebook so that you can go in and actually rewatch them and learn again. You're welcome, Judy. Have a great day. We'll talk to you really soon. And uh, again, thank you for all your feedback and for spending your, an hour of your morning with me.